Hello, citizens of YouTube. This is the Geeky Nerd here. And today we're going to be talking about the long debated discussion around 9mm versus 40 versus the humble 45. <laughs> so, before we begin, oh, you guys hear that? It's the discussion down in the chat going on. <laughs> it's the war, the war has begun. <laughs> uh, if you guys like, nine millimeter hit the subscribe button you guys like 40 smash a like and if you guys like the oh so humble 45 leave a nice humble comment down below so let's get in it guys now what do i personally use nine millimeter i came from the 40 and i made the switch back to nine i originally started out on nine and i have um Made the switch to 40, liked it, but then after some advancements that uh, have come in uh, 9mm technology, which I'll get into here in a second, I have made the switch to 9mm. But if you want to see all the reasons why, uh, check out the video here on the channel. And also pay no attention to the peanut butter Glock over here. That's my everyday carry gun. If you want to see why I chose the Glock 19X, aka the peanut butter Glock, you can check that out here on the channel as well. So... I'm going to be going over the pros and cons of each, and then we'll kind of do like a comparison, but you know, between the two, you guys know where I stand on it, but I am not biased. I have carried all three of these rounds, uh, most recently, like I said, nine and 40, but, uh, we're just going to kind of go through it. And if you take anything from this video, the first thing is no matter what the caliber of your choice is, because any one of these calibers on the table will do a sufficient job of, uh, protecting your life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, all the fun stuff, <laughs> All these will do fine. And whichever round you feel most comfortable with, confident in, for whatever the reason is, carry that round because that round will be the one that saves your life. Because if you don't feel confident with your carry gun and the round that you are carrying, then there is no point because you've already lost the battle. So whatever anyone says, don't carry 40 because it's too much, 45, whatever. Again, whatever you feel safe with, use that round. So getting into it here. Pros of the 9mm. First thing is capacity. Out of all of these rounds on the table, 9mm will always have the most capacity. It's just as plain as that. Fit in the same magazine, same frame, same gun, 9mm will win just because it is a smaller round overall. As you can see, comparing these two, you have 9mm. Now, I did do Cellier and Bellet. For all these, keep it even. The bullets do look a little bit different, but don't take that into anything. They are you know, essentially the same. So you can see here, it's just a bit taller and just a bit wider. Good middle ground. And how people usually say is that nine's, you know, the bottom end, 40's the good middle ground for the guy who can't choose what the heck he wants, and 45 is because back to back World War champs. <laughs> um comparing here, you see the 40 and then the 45. A little bit bigger again. A lot bigger bullet though. Uh especially when you compare it to the <laughs> old nine millimeter. So <laughs> definitely a big difference. But capacity. If essentially what I've noted is that nine millimeter will have about two more rounds than 40 and then 40 will have about three more rounds than 45, just how it works out. So if you value those two more rounds and you believe that in your training, everything that those two more rounds can make the difference, which they most certainly can go with the nine millimeter. Stop the video. Now, if you value capacity most, that's pretty much it. Second thing for pro for nine millimeter is availability. It being that nine millimeter is the official NATO cartridge, which for those of you, uh, those of you that don't know, geeky nerd moment here, <laughs> is that uh, when NATO adopts a cartridge, then any country that is joined within NATO has to have that round available, and as their one of their common, you know, common, common core weapons, and have it something chambered in that. So basically, it means if you are ever in the situation in any kind of international country, what have you, nine millimeter is going to be the most available. Also, around the world, bar none. The 9mm is the most available, whether NATO country or not, so you're more likely going to find it. Flip side as well, coming back here on the uh, the good old USA soil, is that it's going to be essentially everywhere because everyone knows that they have to have it because people are going to use it and people like using it as the most commonly used ever, just like 5.56. Of course, in these unprecedented times, that is not so much the case with the ammo shortage, which you can see my videos on the channel here about that, talking about that and why it's occurring. But that's pretty much it for availability. Third benefit to 9mm, recoil. For those of you that are, that are out there and that are recoil sensitive, i.e. you don't like the, you know, the big boom, the big bang, the, you know, um, your wrist is a little frail, then 9mm is going to be the best for you. Uh, 
with that as well, of course, with recoil, you do have um, you do have better follow up shots because your gun is not physically flipping up farther than you know any one of these other rounds, so you can make those follow up shots faster. But for those of you that are recoil sensitive, nine millimeter, the best way to go. Now, for every yang and there's a yang cons. Now, first con is stopping power. Now, stopping power is something that's thrown around a lot in gun culture and the 2A community, and um, pretty much any <laughs> getting hit with any round, any point, no matter where it is, is gonna suck. It's gonna hurt, and more likely the person's gonna go down. Unless they're cooler, say, uh, you know, Florida man who's on God knows what and uh, has just had an adrenaline dump. <laughs> um, but stopping power, what I usually equate that translating to is being able to punch through a barrier or obstacle that is in between you and your target. Whether that barrier is clothing, whether that barrier is windshields, whether that barrier is refrigerator doors, <laughs> uh, anything like that. And it's just the um, it's just the general ballistic coefficients and velocities and all that fun stuff, being, being able to get the round through that material and get to its intended target. Now, 9mm lacks that stopping power just because it has it is a smaller round as you say it's just generally smaller it has less powder in the casing to be able to push that and the round itself is smaller so it's not going to disperse this energy over a larger area so with that it's just going to have less stopping power aka you know uh pushing through power <laughs> the second benefit or second con i should say to the nine millimeter and I really don't have a whole lot bad to say about the 9mm. It's, it's come a long way, but this is definitely a con for it, is availability. I know, you're saying, wait, he just said availability is a pro. Well, it's also a con for the fact that every single gun out there that is being made will always have, bar and large, by and large, will almost always have a 9mm variant. And since most people enjoy the 9mm, that when we're going through shortage like we are now, it's hard to find. It's just not as readily available. Now, when the calibers are coming back in, 9mm, of course, will be the first, but it will also be the first to go out. So it's an up and a down. When the, you know, when the times are good, they're really good, and when they're bad, they're really bad. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much all I really have bad to say about the 9mm, at least in my personal opinion of what, um, what I believe with you know, training and you know, uh, terminal ballistics and all that fun stuff. That's all that I can really see bad about the nine millimeter, at least in my opinion. If you think otherwise, or you have something else to add, throw it down in the comments down below. I love to hear it. Have a little discussion going on. Moving on 40, the middle, uh, the middle child, <laughs> uh, 40 caliber, another geeky, mer geeky nerd moment coming here. So, uh, bear with me it, uh, for those of you, for those of you that don't know the nine or 40, <laughs> uh, calibers, too many of them. For those of you that don't know, the 40 Smith & Wesson was developed in regards to the Miami-Dade shooting uh, that happened between you know, federal agents and a few of the bad guys. And uh, essentially, they were carrying you know 9mm, 38 specials, things along those lines. And they, uh, they had a, a pretty hard time being able to uh, take down the suspect. Again, it comes down to that pushing through, stopping power, knockdown power. And they came to Smith West and said, Hey, we want to like, we want a better round that is not as snappy and not as big as the 10 millimeter, but has a bit more knockdown power than nine, which again, coming through, being able to get through clothing, armor, what have you. So lo and behold, 40 was born. Now, with the 40, the obviously I said the pro is stopping power. It is going to have a bigger hole, transfer more of its energy to the target, and be able to get through any barriers that are between you and the target a lot easier and more successfully than the nine millimeter. So one one thing for it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now a second benefit to it is going to be reloadability. For those of you that reload out there, as I just said, it is a necked down 10 millimeter. And of course, the only thing better than a nine millimeter is 10 millimeter. Am I right? <laughs> um, but if you're going to reload and you're not able to find 40, uh, 40 caliber rounds, you can take a 10 millimeter, neck it down and boom, there you go. You have a now 40 Smith & Wesson. So you have a bit more ammo availability when you're in the terms of reloading. Now, the final benefit I would say to the 40 is um, cost and availability. So availability for 
it is going to be more available when nine millimeter is not around just because not many people shoot it. So it is, um, there, there's going to be more of them and more readily available. So it's just, it's just the law of, you know, what people like. <laughs> Also, with that, beyond the round being more available, the firearms that shoot 40 are going to be more available because people will trade those in, go to a 9mm. Especially now that we're seeing with the ammo shortage, you know, 40 calibers are coming up because everyone bought all the 9s that they could ever want. So now 40s are available. And traditionally, they're cheaper because no one really wants to have another round in their arsenal. They just want to stick the 9 and 5.56, which is understandable. But for those of you that uh, uh, for those of you that are looking to get in on the cheap, get a good gun, perfectly fine, especially police trade-ins then 40 Smith & Wesson might just be right up your alley. Moving down, of course, here's another yin-yang con, is capacity. Like I was saying, 9mm is going to win as the capacity wars. 40 Smith & Wesson is going to traditionally have two rounds less than 9mm for the same frame, gun, all that fun stuff. So if you value capacity more than anything, go with the 9. But if you can sacrifice those two rounds, which... Of course, shot placement is more critical than anything because getting hit with any of these is going to suck. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you hit somebody with a 9 and a 40, they're not going to be able to tell you which one's which. So it's all about shot placement. Uh, but that extra capacity, of course, if you're not the best of shots, those two extra rounds could make up for the two that you missed. So um, so that's one downside to the 40 Smith & Wesson. Additionally, with that more stopping power, of course, every every action has an equal and opposite reaction, is that it's going to have more recoil. Now, that is going to affect those that are recoil sensitive, those that don't like, you know, recoil, um, and the, well, of course, those that don't recoil are recoil sensitive, <laughs> duh, <laughs> but um, it's going to affect those people the most. Also, it does have a bit more snap to it. And with that snap, you have reduced follow-ups. So when you're, you know, you're firing the gun, it's going to kick up a lot faster and quicker to where nine is kind of easier, more controllable. It doesn't go up as fast, but it's going to, you know, come up a lot quicker because there's more powder and it's pushing a heavier projectile out at a quicker speed. So those follow-up shots are going to be not as efficient. Now, if you train with the 40 and the 40 is all that you know, you're going to be as quick as the person with a nine millimeter off the gate. But it will always have more recoil. And as long as you understand and contain that recoil then you'll be fine. But for those of you that aren't, go out shooting, you know, 20 rounds once a month, it's something might something you might want to consider. Now, finally, moving up to the humble, last but not least, back-to-back -back World War champ. Let's give it up, folks. The 45 ACP. <laughs> guys, don't hate me for the back-to-back -back World War champs thing. It's the 45. You guys know it's 1911. Come on. <laughs> um, now, 45... It's been around for a while. 9mm, been around for a while as well. 40 is kind of the new kid on the block, and it's had its ebbs and flows, you know, goes up and down. But uh, 45, been around for a while, know its effectiveness, but it, of course, it does have its pros and cons. Now, its pro is stopping power. Again, I equate stopping power to be able to punch through that target or get, you know, between the barrier, you, the barrier, and the target. And 45 is going to do it as pretty much as good as any of them. For the simple fact that it is go, it is a bigger round that has more mass to it, and it's being pushed through, so it isn't just going to dump all its energy because it doesn't have much to begin with. Put in this, uh, uh, what is this, two hundred thirty grain? Yeah, two hundred thirty grain round. So it's gonna be able to get through those targets a lot better. So that's one good thing about it. Another good thing, more of a more for a specialty crowd out there, is forty five is naturally subsonic. Now, what does that mean? Uh, hi, uh, hypersonic, subsonic. Subsonic basically means it stays under the sound barrier as far as that subs or that that supersonic crack, and the supersonic rounds obviously go beyond that. So what I mean is you have the sound of the explosion of the gunpowder going off, but then you also have the sound of the round breaking the um, sound barrier, and you hear that sharp crack of the gun. And, you know, you hear it echo through the hills. <laughs> and 45 is naturally subsonic because it has less powder and it's pushing a bigger round. So inherently, it, it, it has a little bit less noise equ uh, equated to it. Now, that doesn't mean it's, you know, you, you can shoot it without ears, but it, um, it has a bit less uh, bark to it, if you want to think of it like that. Now, also with that, final benefit for it is recoil. Now, 
being that you would think, oh, well, if nine's the, you know, latest recoil, 45 is the next, and 45 always got to be the worst. Actually not, because the 40 is going a lot faster and has a lot more kick and snap to it, the 45 is going a lot slower. So even though it's a bigger round, it's getting pushed out at a much slower velocity. So when you fire, people say it's a more of a soft shooter. And I equate that to two things. One is that 45 guns are typically bigger, heavier, and mostly, you know, you just see a lot of them are like 1911s, you think of them. Uh, so they're going to keep that muzzle flip down. But the 45 and things that aren't metal, or aren't steel, I should say, like all steel guns, they are going to, um, they're, they're going to just feel a lot lighter in the recoil department because they're not pushing it out as quickly. So it's going to, it's, you know, you're going to fire it, but it's not going to like snap you back. It's going to be more of a gentle push instead of a snap is what I've heard a lot of people equated to. And I would a hundred percent agree to that. So if you're looking for a, you know, a big bowling ball, essentially being tossed down range and a softer feeling round with that, then 45 might just be right up your alley. Now cons capacity. Out of all of these, 45 is going to have the least amount of capacity by and large. Uh, just like I said, you take two rounds off of every 40 um, or off of every nine to get to a 40. It's pretty much three rounds from a 40 to get to a uh, to get to a 45, three or four rounds at times. So really depends. So, you know, you have a you know thir uh, 13 rounds for a 40. You're going to have probably around 10 for a 45 just because it's a bigger bullet. It has a lot more space to take up. I mean, you can see there it's just... It's a bigger round, period. So, just one thing to uh, just one thing to consider. So, if you value capacity over everything, forty five definitely is going to be up your alley. Second thing is size. Traditionally, forty five caliber guns are bigger and heavier than any of these guns, just because the frames have to be bigger and heavier to equate to the uh, to the big old monster going down range. And uh, for concealability you're not going to find any like pocket micro mini mouse guns that are chambered in 45. It just ain't going to happen. You might find like the little single shot Derringers, <laughs> but that's about it. So size, one thing to consider. Finally, uh, defensive ammo choices. Now, nine millimeter and 40 caliber have come a long way as far as for their, uh, especially like their Hornady critical defense. Uh, my, my personal favorite, uh, uh, defensive round is that, 45 hasn't really kept up with the time just because there's only so much you can do with it because it's not going as fast enough to do enough damage like uh how would you say it's not going fast enough to uh, uh to basically create like like the leaflet or, or darn it what's it called the flechettes and the uh, uh the mushrooming effect of some bullets just because it doesn't have enough um it just isn't zinging through there fast enough so one downside of it. Also, the powders, you can only fit so much in there. I mean, there is a lot more in there, uh, but you can only fit so much. And some frames, uh, some guns handle higher pressure plus P rounds a bit differently, and they're not really made for it just because how the 1911 is. Um, so that is one thing to consider as well with the 45. But that's my, that's my general overview. Uh, and if you want to think of it simple, nine is the, you know, Nine is pretty much the good all around, um, uh, good all around round. Forty is if you want the combination between these two, and forty five is if um, is if you're recoil sensitive, pretty much of anything, or if you're shooting mainly um, sub, uh, uh, or if you're shooting like suppressed or anything like that. So it's really up to your guys' choice. Again, you guys do whatever makes you feel most comfortable and safe. But with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below what you guys are using. Love to hear it. And I hope everyone is having a wonderful, awesome, fantastic day. I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.